Hello and welcome to the morning news. My name is Dino. And here is the story. Ryu to meet with worker seen in viral fight. Communications manager at Ryu Jamaica Mark Marias Pond said the hotel will have a meeting next Thursday with a member of staff who was seen in a now viral video in a fight with a guest recently. The video, which has been circulating on social media platforms, showed the guest throwing liquid at the employee, who works as a bar assistant manager, before walking away. The female employee followed her and a fight ensued. We are following our internal protocols, following the premise of not leaving our workers alone in this type of situation. Next Thursday we will have an internal meeting with her to let her explain to us her version regarding what happened, Pons told Irene News Media TV. He added that the employee is a very good worker who has been at the hotel for nine years. Three were shot and killed, and four were injured at a party in Rockford. Three people are dead and four others injured following a shooting at a party on Roosden Road in Rockford, Kingston, Thursday night. They are 22-year-old Warren Benjamin, a fisherman of Adestra Road, Kingston 2, 19-year-old Raheem Walters, a construction worker of Belmont Road, Kingston, and an unidentified male believed to be in his mid-twenties. The police say the unidentified man is about 5 feet 10 inches tall with an owl tattooed on his throat and a lion on his left forearm. The Ellotson Road police say about 11 p.m., the seven people were among patrons at a party when a man stepped outside the bar and opened gunfire at the group. When the shooting subsided, seven people, including two women, were seen with gunshot wounds. The police were summoned and they were taken to hospital. Three were pronounced dead, while the others were admitted in stable condition. Detectives assigned to the Major Investigations Division are probing the shooting. Jamaica prepared to send 200 security personnel to Haiti, Holness. Prime Minister Andrew Holness has revealed that Jamaica is prepared to send 200 security personnel to Haiti as part of a multinational force aimed at providing support to the security and humanitarian crisis in the country. This is the first time Holness is disclosing such a figure. A statement from the office of the Prime Minister today says Holness made the disclosure during a telephone conversation yesterday with the President of the Republic of Kenya, William Ruto, who indicated that his country is committed to sending 1,000 security personnel and to lead the multinational security force. Holness also noted that the Bahamas has committed to providing 150 personnel, bringing the CARICOM commitment at this time to 350. Holness expressed hope that more countries, whether in the region of the Americas, the continent of Africa, or elsewhere, would also step forward with personnel commitments, and that the requisite UN Security Council resolution will be adopted in order to provide the appropriate jurisdictional framework for the security forces. Regarding CARICOM, Holness said that the good office's efforts currently led by three former prime ministers from CARICOM member states must continue to be supported towards facilitating a political consensus in Haiti. He also expressed gratitude to members of the international community, in particular the United States, Canada, and the UN Secretary-General, who have been advocating strongly for more partners to support peace and stability in Haiti. He also expressed hope that the proposed multinational security force would allow the ordinary and most vulnerable Haitian people to once again go about their daily lives, and access humanitarian aid as needed. Loophole allowing accused scammers to walk free, Sykes. Western Bureau. Many of the persons arrested and charged for possession of identity information, a feature linked to lottery scamming, are benefiting from a loophole in the judicial system which is allowing them to walk free without the case against them being properly adjudicated. During the ongoing Michaelmas term of the Trelawney Circuit Court, some 53 of the 66 cases related to the possession of identity information, which were scheduled for trial, had to be thrown out because the reports pertinent to the cases were not provided promptly by the Jamaica Constabulary Forces Communication Forensics and Cybercrime Unit, CFCU. In explaining the situation to Chief Justice Brian Sykes who is presiding over the circuit court sitting, Claudette Thompson, from the Office of the Director of Public Prosecutions, said the failure to get reports, some from as far back as 2017, is preventing the Crown from going ahead with prosecutions. In the recent high-profile case involving Javon Garwood, who was implicated in the murder of his stepmother, Andrea Lowe Garwood, the case against him broke down because evidence pertinent to the case, which should have come out of the CFCU, was deemed to have either been deleted or scrambled. 
In an interview with the Chief Justice following Thompson's submission before the court, he said his job is to follow the law. That is a problem that the Ministry of Justice has to handle. My job is to treat each case according to guidelines set out in the law, explained Sykes. He, however, painted a grim picture of how persons involved in the possession of identity information, which he described as economic crimes, are beating the system, and getting away with it. These people involved in these activities have calculated that the risk they face when caught is not enough to cause them to think twice about being involved, said Sykes. They calculate their gross, they work out the fines and get government to pay their legal fees through legal aid and they continue once the case is over. However, Sykes made it clear that those who come before him and are found guilty will not get be getting the so-called slap on the wrist punishment as they will face hefty fines. These economic criminals are not stupid. They say to themselves, I can pay the $200,000 fines and be out on the street to continue. Well, I have decided that the fines they face in my court shall be hefty, Sykes warned. During the ongoing sitting of the Trelawney Circuit Court, a young man who was found guilty of possession of identity information was fined $800,000 or two years in prison. That kind of sentence will make others think twice about taking the risk of being a lotto scammer, Sykes said. Strange encounters of the female kind. As women we've all had strange encounters with men, ranging from the inappropriate to the skeevy, to men who are downright high on the predator scale. It's a given, where there's a woman there's bound to be a man who acts like a dog in heat, with all the confidence, audacity, and chutzpah that his arrow will hit its target. But women have given men some stories for the books too. In fact, if you were to pull men you'd find that women are equally predatory, equally inappropriate, and equally wild with their demands, especially when they spot a prey that they simply must bag. We asked men who are taken, what has been the strangest encounter you've had with a predatory woman? Kurt, 38, married. My wife isn't really a big social media person so you won't find her online much, just a few posts on her private Instagram. I also don't wear my ring, as do too, the kind of work I do, I can't really wear jewelry. We also have a social media page for our daughters. So, women always think that I'm available, and even when I say I'm married, they don't care. This one client took it further and decided that she wanted me. She was a high net client so I wanted the contract badly. But she found my wife on Instagram, added her, and went through all her pictures, liking them. She did the same for my kids' page. Then she messaged me and said my wife was kinda cute but not as pretty as she was, and my wife looked old and miserable. I had to count that job as a loss and cut her loose as a client because I didn't see how that obsession could end well. Alex, 28, engaged. I was on a business trip with some colleagues, and after we checked into our rooms and I was on the phone video calling my fiancé, I heard a knock at my door. It was this woman from work who had joked before about my gym body but hadn't said much else before. She handed me one of her room key cards and said I should use it that night and winked. I didn't even know what to say, because she was the last person I'd expect that from. I just handed the key back and closed and bolted the door and continued my call. Luckily I had muted the phone, and still better, for the rest of the weekend she pretended that the incident never happened. Anthony, 31, married. I'm a contractor. I don't hide the fact that I'm married, and a Christian. I went to this woman's house to assess the cost to refurbish her bathroom. She opened the door wrapped in just a towel and asked me what I wanted to do to her. I told her the devil is a liar, and she went and got dressed. I completed the job, but it was very awkward after that. Ricardo, 36, married. We asked a friend from church to watch our son after school, and she was a good sitter. She would care for him like her own child, and even go out of the way to do other things like cook him meals, take him to the barber, and even buy him supplies for school. One time my wife was traveling and that's how it started, she began cooking dinner for me. She said it was better than me ordering fast food all the time, and I really appreciated the home-cooked meals. My wife also heaped her praises for being so thoughtful. Well, after my wife returned it continued, to the point where she would cook me food even on Sundays when she knew my wife was cooking, and would just bring portions for me only. My wife would joke about the stew peas, especially, and the steamed fish and okra meals. While my wife joked about it and would even eat the food, as she said, if she was trying to tie one of us she would tie all of us, I noted how disrespectful she was being, and just slowly drew away. Samuel, 28, in a long-term relationship. I own my business and do pretty well. I did some work for this lady, and noticed that she was always very flirty, calling me baby and whatever. But I never paid her much mind because, in general, the women I work for, 
once they see that it's a young person running the company they always flirt. So I just learned to ignore them. This particular woman, when we were almost finished with the work and I was to inspect it, she told me she was going to cook. I knew the Schweppes, so when I was going there I brought three of my workmen along. When she saw us she was so upset, if you cut her she wouldn't bleed. She had made candlelight dinner for two, with wine, Spanish rice and everything. She asked why I hadn't come alone, and then fumed while she found some extra plates to give my workmen the food.